bulbous crayons <laughs> made me ah, yeah. sick. <laughs> Glowy, natural, and matte. It's good for everybody. No, it isn't. I said, this is dry. dry. So I was walking around with orange foundation. Uh -huh. So I was like, wow. Not much has changed. <laughs> and put a tissue over it and then pinch the cotton ball in the <laughs> tissue and make a ghost. If anybody ever came at me with a cotton ball wrapped in a tissue, dead corpse morgue cool tone. And then everyone just looked like this the whole time yeah. in the movie. You're one collection away of going on a registry. <laughs> Arrgh. <laughs> You're low energy today. You can tell. Are you sad? <laughs> yeah. I love myself, but I don't like the way I am. <laughs> Wait, yes. were you quoting Nanaland at first? No. Oh. What? Nanaland. Never. Are you feeling mad? Yeah. No, I've never seen that. Sorry. Do you go on Instagram? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you you don't. You don't. No, I think when you make content, you're not much of a content. Uh, observer. Uh-huh. Because by the time I'm like done, I throw my phone in the river. So I okay. don't want to look at anything. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Are you sad? Yeah. Oh, wait, again. <laughs> yeah. We're not we're circling. Yeah. Uh no, no. Just the weather. The wet we're having weather. We're having weather. Yeah. Windy W I N D Y. That's what the community calls you. <laughs> yeah. Marcel the Shell? No. <laughs> Windy. The movie. Marcel the Shell that they just remade. So I'm talking made. about the YouTube originals. Okay, that, that where it came from. Yes, and it was like this whole thing that obviously Marcel the Shell like blew up, and then they made the movie, and I watched the movie. So cute. I was nervous to watch that movie because Casey and I saw the trailer for that at the movie theaters, and we would like started sobbing. Wait. So I was like nervous I was gonna cry. Are we talking about the same Marcel Mar the Shell with shoes on? Yes. The little he's like shell lost. with the eyes. He's trying to find his family. You're <laughs> dead inside. No, yes. no, because I want to make the sure we're on the same made page. Me cry because and that the whole voice. thing is so. Yeah, and he's like, "Hi, I know." He's I'm like, Marcel the shell. And he's like, "I just want my family." Yeah, and I'm and like, he's like oh. "Oh, just trying to find grandma." Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god! No, Devil? And then, yeah. no, no, no. But I want to make sure we're on the yeah. same page because I'm like, you crying at a shell would. Yeah, yeah. You, I would think you think that's yeah certain things. Touch your Strike soul. Me. Yeah, 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 yeah. It takes a lot, but <laughs> totally. Yeah. Uh, so today is part two of brands that are in their flop era. Yes. We had to split it up into two parts. Yeah. Yo. We did not end up filming it right afterwards because we ended up filming a beauty video after that, which was our London trying full face of London makeup. So that was scarring. And then uh, we're both wearing new foundations. Unfortunately, there's not going to be a purchase or pass on this episode, but all I'll say is we will put them probably in the next episode but check make sure to follow uh the beauty channel because we are posting or it might be out by now the full face of viral new makeup and both of the foundations we discovered amazing girl girl, girl. so you've seen me in dior that forever met 50,000 times how do you think this compares so i think your skin personally looks more realistic and skin healthy like, like you your skin looks like skin and it's perfected and it's <laughs> It's you're radiant and a you have a satin finish on your skin, but it doesn't look oily or greasy at all. I know. No, this your skin, skin is looks, skinning. Yeah. Should we say what it is, or should we have them go watch the? You other gotta go video? watch the other video. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So go watch it because your skin looks. Thank incredible. you. Incredible. I know. And the one you're wearing is. I tried it and I loved it. Um, I will say. And we said this in the video, I think you need to use a little bit more of that foundation to get, or Agreed. I should just say it's a thicker consistency. Mm -hmm. So on someone with pores, texture, and like uh, fine lines that have the possibility of creasing, which you don't, fuck you, um, is uh, <laughs> it's just a thicker foundation. So yeah. I think you have, I noticed it, like I love both, but I'm, I lean towards this, but I knew when I put it on, I was like, he's going to eat this up. I love it. I I'm know. obsessed with it, but I do want to try the one that you're wearing. So mm -hmm. next time I, I actually think I'm going to go get it because it's yeah. so nice. Yeah. Oh my God, it's beautiful. I know. I also have a little treat I need you to judge. So, you know, Warby Parker, the glass company, yeah. they do the at-home try-on. Like, mm -hmm. you can pick frames or whatever and then do it. This isn't sponsored by Warby Parker. <laughs> I know. Welcome. It almost sounded like it. Yeah, you're welcome. But, uh, so I have... <gasps> 
I have my frames. Oh my God. And I think it would be fun for you slash our viewers to let me know which one you like best. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm excited. Okay. This is unexpected. I did not know this was I happening. Know. Okay. Right. Number one. Okay. Distinguished gentleman. Yeah. You look like you're very smart. And okay. that's different. <laughs> yeah. That's different. Yeah. Um, We're trying something new. <laughs> trying something new. Don't know if I love round on you. Okay. Okay. I don't know. I think you look very handsome in these. Okay. But I would love to see other ones with different shapes. Okay. Number one. And these no. are just frames, right? These don't have your no, prescription. These aren't prescription. So they just send you to these to try them on. Yes. <gasps> oh, I like the color of these with the blue. <gasps> Number two. Okay. I don't know if you guys can tell, but these have like a tortoise shell with blue. Yes. I'm I know. living for the color scheme of these. Okay. And I like the bigger frame on you of these. These I are agree. still rounded, yes. but they're fitting you more. Yes. I love these these are really cool these are okay okay i always find too because i have a long face that i like a wide mm -hmm. bigger frame because yeah. i think it balances it out yeah, yeah. So i really like these number two okay okay on to number three okay same kind of these are a touch smaller yes the color is interesting because okay. it's almost like it's like a you bought clear glasses and they're aging in color and they're dirty and they're dirty. Okay. Number three. And now <laughs> we have number four. Oh, okay. Very similar to the first where they look very like sophisticated. Okay. Um, I love, yeah, the black and gold is I cool. I know. I really, okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And number five. This is Old Man Winter. This is Hong Shu Mi Mi Mi. I just woke up from, and I have my nightcap yeah. and candlestick from my sleep. Okay. It ain't no. it. Okay. Mama. That's number five. Okay. So it <laughs> seems like your favorites were four. The um the black and gold. And then the tortoise two. shell with the I love this. Okay. I do love this. There was another one too. Not the dirty ones. Not the dirty. So then it would have the, been the first. Not those. Not no, the first. maybe it was okay. So the dirty ones, yeah. If they were in a different color, okay. So number three in a different color, three in a different color. You don't like the rounder, no. Okay, the last ones were <sighs> the worst. Okay, all yeah. right. So your, I would say your vote is yeah, number two or four. Yeah, two and four. Okay, definitely in there. So you have to let us know what you think. Yeah, my frames are so old. I was like, I need new glasses. Oh my which... god, that's so cool. That's I really like that that you could try mm -hmm. them on and then send them back yes. and then pick. That's really cool. I did cool. a paper on them in college because I went for business marketing mm -hmm. and Warby Parker was like a very. I mean, they've been around for decades now mm -hmm. at this point, but back in the day, they like revolutionized the eyewear industry because of it was no brick and mortar stores and it was all online only. So it was like wow. the quality of designer frames, but at the time, no frame was over $90. Now, 90% of them are 90, but you can get some that are like 150, but no frame was over $90. And they did the at home try on thing when the, in the, you know, invention of the internet, like kind of a few years after, and they like, totally disrupted the uh eyewear industry so it was a really they were like the first to do it that's so cool and yeah. now you go into malls and you see the warby yes. parker stores which is really cool you they have like brick and mortars like on the street and like i think they even have them in some city like cities they have yes. them just like a regular store you yeah. walk in you try them on yeah it's really cool yeah so also i wanted to say the golden globes were just on and then i think the emmys are next weekend because the emmys are normally in september but because of the writer strike they got delayed and then i think after that is the grammys and then i know like the oscars are always like the last weekend of february first weekend of march wow of course i was watching it and thinking like when we did the met gala episode the like makeup police episode i really want to do that again but i'm almost thinking i feel like we should wait for the Emmys to come out. We'll do the Golden Globes and the Emmys together. And then uh, the Grammys? I don't know. The, I hate watching the Grammys are my least favorite show to watch because it might as well be the MTV. It's a popularity contest. The like, Grammys and the MTV like video VMAs. music awards yeah vmas i was like i was yeah. like the v video the i said music video awards and <laughs> yeah. it was vma um yeah the vmas and the grammys honestly yeah it's a popularity contest and honestly with the last time i watched the grammys and the vmas i was just kind of like it was years ago it was so 
uninteresting because it became more of a an uninteresting conversation about politics. And I yes. said, leave that out of the Grammys and music. It was too much where I was like, we need to pause. Like, yes. we're here for video music awards. <laughs> yeah. We're here for musical awards. Why are we talking about who hates who? Who I hates know. what? Uh, no. uh, so you're you're talking more about the pop, the the music industry politics. Yeah, and okay. I'm like, why are we bringing that to the award shows? I know. L- like, I'm excited to see like who won video of the year, who won album of the year. Like, yeah. I don't need to hear like a 10 to 15 minute dissertation of why you think you're right. Like, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, just yeah. don't. It was like, leave it alone. I like, know. It's just not the time or place. Time and place. Time and place. <laughs> But yeah, like I'm not interested in watching the Grammys anymore, but I love the fashion element. Okay, so you just took the words out of my mouth because the Grammys are my <clears> least <throat> favorite show to watch, but it's the most interesting makeup and fashion because, because it's that's, edgy. Yeah, because that's where you're allowed to go. It's like the Met Gala where you, it's expected to go edgy. Same, yes. The Grammys and the VMAs teetering yeah. a little. It gets a little like... Kids boppy at the VMAs. Nickelodeon but, Kids yeah, Choice Awards. Yeah. yeah. Literally, like Katy Perry in the blue wig getting slimed. Girl. Like, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Grammys makeup is always something I've looked forward to because yes. think about like iconic when Cher has showed up. Oh, when, uh, Gaga. Lil Nas, Gaga. Yeah. I, I mean, all of the people that I look forward to in fashion and mm-hmm. like who push the limit, which can we talk about Lil Nas X coming out with his new single? It's out. No, no, oh. no, no. It comes out, I think, on the 12th. Ooh, no, I didn't two days. hear this. It's called, like, Jesus Christ, and it's him. Talk about somebody that, like, pushes the oh. boundary. It's him literally on the cross, like, Jesus. Oh, gosh. I'm like, and People he... People are going to be mad. Allegedly, yeah. he's, like, going to college, too, for, like... So he's, like, enrolled in a course next month or something to, like, do, like, religious studies. Girl, nobody is better at marketing than Lil Nas X. Like, he... When he did the Montero album, yes. when he was, like, pregnant, and then he went through the whole... I know. The whole thing of rushing him in the hospital. Yeah. Too, and I just... They were like, oh, my God, you're gushing. And he was like... <gasps> Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just, yeah. Like, he is so. Oh, that's exciting. He is so smart. I love him. I know. Him. He like, really I is. I am really, really obsessed with him. Like, yeah. He is so funny to me. He's yeah. just a genius. Yeah, he really is. And talk about someone that always, like, looks incredible on the red carpet. Lil yeah. Lil Nas X. Oh, my um, God. And then the Oscars, to me, is elevated makeup. And f- it's just, is rivaling that, is Met uh-huh. Gala without the edge. But it's just, like, the sophistication through the roof. Mm. So that, uh, yeah, I definitely, where I feel like the Emmys and the Golden Globes are just a it's little safe. bit more exactly. It's just a little basic Betty, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe we'll do an Emmys and Golden Globe episode together, and then we could do Grammys and Oscars. We'll see how we divide it up. But yeah. I'm in the mood to do another makeup Ooh, police. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, totally. I miss doing that. That was really fun. And, and we're, we're back. back. Let's kick it off with yeah. uh, brand number one. Oh, Nars. Nars. Narcissist. <laughs> Ew, yeah. We yeah. are a narcissist. I know. Yeah, when you love nar like ew. Flop. Yeah. Flop. So we talked about it when we were making the criteria, as we said last week. It, it became very clear how uh a brand needed to have a heyday mm-hmm. to then be in a flop era. Yeah. But then it also sparked another conversation of certain brands, like we talked about with like Fenty or Anastasia last week, were entering almost, in my opinion, like the second decade of makeup fever. Like mm-hmm. we're now in this whole second wave with a second wave of new influencers. All the first ones canceled themselves, the whole nine yards. Like, and it's interesting to s- analyze brands that were so good in that first wave. And that includes the social media game and the PR situation and the stunts and the capitalizing on it. Maybe even though they still have so many products that were big then and they still have them now, it's not so much of a issue of like Fenty where she rose so quickly and now it's like, okay, how are you going to keep that momentum going? These other brands like NARS and other ones we're going to talk about, they've been good for so long. But now as we enter this oversaturated market, the second decade of makeup fever, what are you going to do or what are you doing to kind of reinvent yourself or right. stand out in a oversaturated market now with lower barrier to entries, with more indie brands, et cetera? And I think that NARS is in that category. Agreed. And I think it, it's something like a let's even take a NARS or let's take a Fenty, for example. Let's think more retail, you know, mm-hmm. put your retail hat on. When you do really well 
in a calendar year, let's say you have a viral moment. Let's take NARS, mm -hmm. orgasm. Mm -hmm. It was popular for so many years, right? And then every year you want to you have a strategic plan to anniversary those numbers from last year. Yes. Like when we were at Sephora or with brands and all that, like yeah. when you look back and they want to anniversary those numbers of, okay, what are we going to do? What's going to be the product of the year? When brands have to ask themselves, what's going to be the viral product of the year? You've already lost. Yes. You've already lost the game. Yeah. There is no planning virality. No. If you try and make a viral product, Isn't you're going to flop. Truth? And that's... I know. I feel like that's where we're at with NARS because yeah. they've they've rode that orgasm train to the bank and back how many times. And now when you go into a Sephora, I mean, they have orgasm in 10 different product categories from lip, cheek, face, body. It's like, their pillow talk. Yeah. It is. And again, that's oh, that's another one yeah. too, where how many times are you going to try and reinvent this singular product and try and like spider web it out and then, you know, throw the pasta to the wall and see what sticks it becomes repetitive and it becomes old for people. So that's where I feel like NARS, they rode that train all those years and were like, we're untouchable. No mm -hmm. one else is doing this. And then an indie brand like a ColourPop or someone else, you know, comes out with a blush that rivals orgasm and then yes. does better. I know. And then they're like, I don't need to spend $30 on a blush anymore. I'm going to spend I know. seven. Yes. And there was all the orgasm dupes, which in NARS's defense, it's like, yeah, we're the OGs. We created this color. Yes. That we made the first that yeah. was like that. But at the end of the day... I know. Makeup consumers want to find dupes and it's fun to find those things. It's like, oh my God, I found this viral product and here's something that looks exactly like it. Yes. People aren't going to run to NARS anymore. No. They're going to run there for their staples. Like if they love the foundation and it wears for them, something that they need the dependability yes. of like a foundation where like maybe a lower end won't do that. But again, this is where I feel like NARS is kind of running out of ideas because now they're trying to like, okay, what can we come out with that's yeah. going to grab people? And it's just not working anymore. Absolutely. And that and that's exactly what I mean. It's like, A, you have your, in my opinion, complexion products are things that you're are a little less vulnerable to being duped because you have mm -hmm. your foundations and so on and so forth and maybe an amazing powder or concealer, whatever. They're less prone to being duped because a foundation is going to do something for you that like both the foundations we're wearing, which by the way, the foundation you're wearing, $22. I just saw it on Instagram today. Um, oh. geez, yeah. Go to the video. And uh, foundations like that are less vulnerable to being duped because they're going to do something like mm -hmm. the one I'm wearing is higher end. I've never used anything that does this, that has this consistency, that has this what this does in every uh, category, if you will. Yeah. Other products like blushes, et cetera, are easier to be duped. So you know that those are more vulnerable to be duped. So when they are, then it's a question of, okay, what can we do that no one else can do? And that's not just a question of money, financial resources, capital, capital distribution, but it's also a question of innovation in the sense that when we worked at, when I was at Sephora with you, 2014, 2015, Everyone and their mother, NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I personally never got the hype, but I understood why other people liked it. It wasn't right, right for me. But now, girl, there are 50 concealers, drugstore included, that in my opinion are better than NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. You still have the people that probably ride or die for it, but mm -hmm. that went down from 70% of makeup wearers to probably now 7%. You don't want to reformulate your Radiant Creamy Concealer because that is a hero product for you. It was. Try something different now. Mm -hmm. Come out. You, have, you haven't you have come out with a concealer or played around with a new concealer formula in 15 years. Yeah. So let's, a bunch of other technology has come out. Let's play around with that. Mm -hmm. Then on top of it is someone like you and I that talk about this all the time. There is still so many gaps in the market that can be filled, let alone gaps in their repertoire that could be filled. I just said on last week's episode uh, how Fenty, in my opinion, struggles with their complexion products. And lo and behold, you texted me saying that because they just came out with a hydrating concealer. Because yeah. we were saying everything is a little dry and whatever. NARS, the eyeshadows, they're okay, but we could 
fix those and upgrade them. We could upgrade all of our powders. You have no powder foundations that are good. You have no, uh, your powder bronzers enough with the Lagunas. Like come, there is still, and now on top of it, we said back in that day too, NARS bullet lipsticks were the goat. They're getting rid of them. I know. What are you doing? And the launch that really got under my skin when they discontinued their pencil mats, Mm -hmm. that the Cruella, you know, the Dragon Girl, the Sex Machine, all of those like popular colors all throughout the years, discontinued those. And it was 10 colors to replace an entire range from Bahama. Remember Bahama? Yes. Uh, Do Me Baby, all of those like brown nudes that were gorgeous cool tones. They took every shade and got mm. rid of every single satin and matte and Girl. replaced it with 10 shades yeah. of matte, reds, browns, and in between orangey browns. I know. What are we doing at NARS that you think that shade range of lipstick is going to cater to everyone in this market? Yes. What are we doing? Because then your bullet lipsticks are now getting pulled where they had, I'm going to butcher the name. I think it's called Scap or Sh- Shiop. Okay. It's Scaparelli, I think, is okay. the designer name. I, God forgive me. I'm like, take away my gay card. Yeah. But it's the hot pink that I showed this you. This is a very specific gay card, and you're up there in the top 1%, so yeah. I think you're fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was that hot pink. Yes. And then they had, um, I almost said Roman Reloaded, Roman <sighs> Holiday, the, that baby, yeah. remember the baby pink that was like yes. a satin? Gone. And they came out with so many fucking lip products in the past year and a half. How much PR have I got of all the lipsticks? Yeah. And it's like the glosses and the twist up. And they're all those ugly colors, the same things, yes. warm tone nudes and reds. Yes. that and, and that, Worse like, formulas than what they have. Yeah. What do we? I don't understand. And I NARS, know. I went to them for the longest time. They were really, remember the duo eyeshadows? Yes. The bright green and the bright blue together. The white and the black together. The I pink know. and the purple. Eyeshadows, they were beautiful. Their the single eyeshadows used to be stunning. And then oh when they God. started doing palettes, it was like, yeah. what are we? The lip liners. We used to go there for eyeliner, lip liner. We used to go there for like beautiful, like if somebody Their was gel getting eyeliner. married. That's what we all used back in the day. We used to fight each other. You just unlocked something and in my mind. And they got rid of that. They discontinued that while I was still there. Yes. That was 2014, <gasps> 2015. gel liner. The creamiest gel liner that lasted like no one's business. Not only that, it was one of the only products back in the day when we used to do bit, like very vampy uh, Paris Hilton at the Met Gala Smokey Eye. We used to use that gel liner as, as the base, base. Oh before we put God. the shadow on because it was <gasps> the best one. They got rid of that in, it would have been like 2015. Wow. I know. One of the best gel liners. You just unlocked a memory that I was probably so hurt when it got discontinued. We were all like, what? Because but I remember, I, I don't know why it sticks out my brain. I remember asking over the walkie because I had a makeover at like saying like, are there any more? Can I make a tester? Because it looked like they were sold out or whatever. And I remember someone coming back over and going, no, they're getting rid of it. And over the walkies, it was just like, what? What? Like start, yeah. you saw everyone like yeah. free, start freaking like, out. Um, What are the meerkats? In, yeah, like, literally. The, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for me, it's oh just, my it's God. A, issue with them it's complacency yeah it's complacency yeah because you have such like a core product that could be amazing and then here you are gonna get rid of it i know and like i I don't and then you're gonna say something better's coming and then it's not better i know i know it's not better that brings us to the next one which is kind of in the same vein uh but where nars is complacent i think this brand is lazy and Uh that is mac oh yeah mac has yep. been in their flop era for many, many years. Yeah. And the reason I find them so lazy is because of, like, we always joke around about the holiday collections at this point are girl. We're and selling things and packaging. We founded the warehouse from 15 years ago. It's yeah. the same shit. Existing shades that they just put silver snowflakes on and call it the hol- holiday collection. They've come out with nothing really new, new, except I feel like the most uh, hyped new thing is that new radiant foundation okay i've been seeing everywhere yeah. i haven't tried it because i'm not a radiant gal yeah uh, but that clicky pen foundation was boots nasty yeah and then they came out with this five seconds later when that was supposed to do what this did but then in general it's again it's nothing has been updated nothing is different nothing no. yeah and i will say two things one stop collaborating with dead celebrities <laughs> yes because it's not sound happening like a goose. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, and then also too, stop discontinuing your core products. I know. I still, ha- I have a pain in my heart 
for Candy Yum Yum. Yeah, you girl. know, y'all know me, Neon Pink. Yep. They have the lipstick. They discontinued the gloss mm-hmm. and the lip liner. I know. Don't tell me about talking points <laughs> because it is not the same color yeah. as Candy Yum Yum. I know. Yeah, it's similar. It's more purple. Do not come to me and tell me that you are like at Mac, like, oh, we're going to discontinue something because they are the queens of discontinuing something, saying something better is coming. And it is so horrible. Estee Lauder brands love to do that. I know. They love to do it. Yes. And I'm so sick of it, too, because I remember the days of Mac when I used to go wait in line before the store opened. Mm -hmm. I will vividly always remember I was late to my shift. (laughs) Uh, at Sephora, waiting at the Mac store with a coworker because the Kelly Osborne collection was coming out the collab, okay. and it was the lipsticks in her packaging, and she did like Kelly Yum Yum, uh, which wow. was candy yum yum but it more of a satin finish not a matte and then she had three other colors they had the bronzers the blushes and then they had like the Sharon Osborne okay the red packaging and her Kelly's was in purple like a lilac I ran to get that the Viva Glams when they did that the Nicki Minaj um uh Ricky Martin was it yes he did the lip conditioner and she did the lipsticks and everything Mm -hmm. I still have those in the box at home wow and people are like I will buy them off you I'm like I know no well you and you know what's crazy to me it's like you would think whoever if I could tell Mac anything it's like we're living in this time of like not only makeup now but entering this uh, makeup heyday but entering the second decade of makeup I'm noticing a trend of almost uh makeup nostalgia like almost a reemergence of Kevin Aquan, a reemergence of 90s makeup, a reemergence of that aesthetic. And it's like you take someone like Erin Parsons, who is the Maybelline global artist. She's huge on YouTube and TikTok. She's unbelievable. Episode three of the pod. She's curating uh, makeup for a makeup museum in New York City. And she always uh, shows vintage Mac makeup. When she makes these videos showing vintage like 80s uh, Mac eyeliners and I'm sorry, lip liners and lipsticks in the original packaging and the original lip liners were in the like a silver, the silver, yeah, yeah, the silver gray. If you Mac returned and they're always like clinging onto this dead corpse of a image they think they still have, if you quite literally rebranded and went back to that people would go feral oh and it's simple packaging going back to what it was and then return to the original shades of things and erin parsons did a video where she had an original spice spice lip liner and she was saying how much more cool tone in 90s it was compared to regular spice which a why did we ever change the color B, it's so much more warm than the 90s because the 90s uh, Spice lip liner was literally made famous by Kevin Aquan and Linda Evangelista, and they like sold it out back in the late 80s, early 90s. And she was basically trying to find a dupe for it. She said she found the closest dupe for it, which was a Kevin Aquan lip liner, which you and I bought. And <laughs> we it was love you to death, Erin. I don't know what that maybe different. <clears throat> I, I, what that situation, what, or maybe that one changed too. And girl, she who knows? Yeah, because that look, Kevin Aquan was caramel yeah, warm. It wasn't uh, cool tone. But. Just go back to your people for that nostalgia. Imagine teens now, sixteen year olds running out go back to Mac, thinking the, like that you could get that recreation of the exact looking and color pencil Linda Evangelista wore. You and I would run out and buy everything in five seconds. Because uh, like you just said, Mac likes to cling on to that. And they like to do the, you like to do the same thing and put a snowflake on it. Why not do the same thing and make it, call it OG Spice and be like, you know what? Because remember when KVD, they did that with Lolita when there was a bad batch of Lolita that it was more brown. And they were like, oh, we're going to call this like... Lolita, like Lolita two. 2. And then they were like, but the OG Lolita was then they had the options. No shame in the game. No. Just admit what you've done I and know. just say, Estee Lauder, you know what? Yeah. We screwed up. <laughs> Mac lip liners are not the same. Yeah. Let's do an OG collection. Let's do a 90s Mac. Yes. Do a full campaign with like Linda Evangelista, like campaign today. images I know. today. Kevin Aquan inspired makeup for Mac. Could you imagine the campaign images? Girl. Have Erin Parsons on deck. Yes. Have Erin Parsons do her, Naomi Campbell, Cindy Cr- Crawford. Cindy and Crawford. Christy Charlington. And yeah. give us that. Yeah. And give us a full campaign for like 90s yes. Mac. And then do like a throwback collection. Yeah. Sign us the check, Mac, because we're done. 
Girl. Have OG colors and do a full-blown collection of just like the lip liners, the eyeliners, the eyeshadows, and do a full curated collection. If they had the staples back in their OG packaging and proof that it was the OG colors, you and I would go broke. Le- and that's us, let alone other yeah. people. That's what I'm saying. I like, would buy every piece of the collection without questioning. What are you doing? I would not even blink twice. I would be like, yep, take my card. I know. Here's my money. I know. Take my money and go away. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. But they are getting too comfortable because I remember even the collections back in the day. Remember when they did that bowling collection? It was all the mascaras. and like Bowling? Every, it was like a bowling collection. But no, hold on. I know. The theme, it Because it, yeah. it was like the campaign was so cute. And okay. I was like, okay, what does this have to do with mascaras? <laughs> yeah. But the mascara almost looked like a bowling pin, in my opinion. Uh, okay. So then they did all the colorful mascaras. It was like red mascara, yellow, bright teal, bright orange, it. all. I them. remember the packaging. And I was buying like five or six of them because I was like, these are so cool. And I yeah. would pop them on the bottom to do a fun pop of color. I know. Where is the creativity that Mac was doing? I mean, all the lipsticks that were fun colors, all the frosted ones that were like green and blue and that deep purple. Because Cher had one that she always wore. Oh my God. And it was a frosted color. And I forget what shade it was. Gone. I know. And discontinued. I know. And it was one of Cher's favorites. And I'm like, how is that not... Like, because Russian Red was made for yeah uh, Madonna. Madonna. It was made for Madonna. And I'm like, so we keep things like that, which I think is so cool. Like, that story should be known by everybody. There's so many people that don't know that, like, certain colors were made for people. I know. Or, like, certain colors were worn on tour. Like, Gaga yes. on Monster Ball Tour, she would wear Pink Nouveau and Mac Red all the wow. time. When she would go between Pink and Red during the Monster Ball Tour, yeah. she always had a redder, hot pink lip, and it was always those two colors. And yeah. I bought them because of that. I know. Because it was so, like, there was something, like, a it tied to that memory. And I was like, no, I'm going to keep these forever I because know. she wore them. Yeah. And yeah. it, like, connects you to that, like, moment in time. And I don't know why they just – I feel like they don't care anymore about making memories. It's just about making no. money. Well, and that's the thing. It's like you're – the image they have now of the all-black packaging and whatever the case is, that was their 2.0 rebrand. People yeah. have duped the image, the formulas, the everything of your 2.0 rebrand. Nobody has duped your origin, your 1.0. No yeah. one has duped that. So go back to it. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Like, you, that's such a missed opportunity. I yeah. Because so. I feel like there's going to be, one day there's just going to be a beauty brand out there that just like does what OG Mac does. Girl. I know. Mm-hmm. Fucking 90s. Like yeah. that. I like, know. I know. Need we say more? I know. Next up, uh, Smashbox. <gasps> This one actually hurts. hurts. This I know. one hurts a lot. Yes. And the more I thought about it, I was like, ah, whatever. But I'm like, no. Yeah. It hurts. Because if we go back to, I'm talking camera-ready Smashbox mm-hmm. Studios, the fact that I loved about Smashbox Studios in LA, a lot of brands in Sephora use their studios to shoot campaigns. And what I didn't know, they had to use a minimum of five products from Smashbox on every campaign. Wow. So all these makeup brands were using them to yeah. get camera ready, whether it was a primer or not, whatever. Yes. But the fact that Smashbox was such a heavy hitter, I'm talking hit after hit, every single product you knew, like if I picked it up for anybody's makeover, I knew when they went to go take photos, it was trusted. Absolutely. That there was going to be no question about it. That I the know. tones and everything would look beautiful on camera. Yes. Wedding lipsticks. I yes. would go to Smashbox and NARS. Yes. And I would always go to Smashbox for the lip liners. And I didn't like the ones that were like that packaging that would self-twist and sharpen and Girl. click and people didn't yeah. get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They exactly. didn't understand. I'm yes. talking when they came out with, they had lip liners that you would actually sharpen. Yes. Those were incredible. When they had the liquid lipsticks, when they first came out, I non-drying. Know. Stunning. Beautiful shades. The I contour get, palettes. Oh my God. I know. They, and their eyeshadows. Before yes. they did those little mini, then, little boo-boos. I know. And did they get the rid bo- of that, all that original formula? Yeah, the full exposure is I know. gone. Which I know. full exposure could have been, at the time, it was an amazing formula. Yes. Compared to what, we had we yes. had naked palettes we had all of that but the full exposure 
the nudes oh. with the corresponding shimmers was yes. like the OG Mario. Yes. It was beautiful mats. It almost like a kind of like a Patrick Ta where it was like matte and shimmer. So yes. it was like Mario and all of that, the vibes that we're getting from them. And I never understood why they did this too. And looking now, you got them in PR, the packaging of the primers. Yes. It really speaks on they had beautiful, luxurious glass packaging for the primerizer and the green primer and all of that. You're right. And they had the original squeeze tubes. Yeah. But then they started to rebrand everything. And then the primerizer was, they were all in those like slim, yes, squeezable squeeze. packaging, which is fine. I love that for my kit. Maybelline. Which is, yeah, but Same how are you going to say that like, it just, it started to all feel very like, oh, we have this generic stamp, generic stamp, and like put different formulas in it. And it just felt lazy and just undone. Yes. And then, you know, the writing's on the walls. When the brand starts to downsize in Sephora's to the point of like, it goes from like a two bay. Yes. So that's eight shelves down to a a one bay, which is four shelves, and then down to an end cap. And then down to- no, I was going to say that. It started to break my heart. Like uh, the most exciting thing that they've come out with recently that I loved was the foundation. The the, reformulated foundation, which I give them credit. Yes. But uh, I remember being in Ulta in Herald Square in- New York City, and I they had sent it to me, and the color was a little off, so I wanted to look for a cool tone shade. Let's say there was 40 shades. I'm making this up. There was only 20 in store because they're down to like a one bay, yeah. and they only carry the warms, and all the cools are online only. And I just like walked up to it, and I was like, Smashbox is down to a one bay? Like, yeah. Don't you see you are actively going out of business and you're just not doing anything? I don't even know who owns Smashbox at this point because they have to be owned by somebody. Totally. And you know what also kills me about the whole issue with when there's one product that does well and then when we come out with 50 iterations of it? It's different than NARS having a orgasm blush stick and an orgasm eyeshadow palette. In the case of the Smashbox primers, you had your Smashbox primer. Then you came out with your primer for dry skin, for oily skin, for green color correcting, for hydration. Then they had the radiance, and then they had the bronzing, and then they had all these other ones. So now, what does the original do in the scheme of these other five? My issue with that is you come out with a product and say it's amazing. It could work for everybody. It's for everybody. It's for all skin types. It's glowy. It'll mattify you. It'll control your oil. It'll make your makeup look smooth. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. You say that for 10 years, 10 years, 10 years. Then you come out with a mattifying primer. Then you come out with a hydro... I thought... It's like Laura Mercier, what we said with the Allure Best in Beauty Awards. We came out with a translucent blurring powder. You've been fucking telling everybody for the past 20 years that your first powder blurred. So... Now you're emitting. That's what I'm saying. So either reformulate your original powder to be more blurring or admit your first one wasn't because you're coming out with a blurring powder now when you've been telling us that your first one blurred. Yeah. So you're it's almost like shooting yourself in a, in the foot when you have one product and then you start expanding on it because you're contradicting your original messaging. Yeah. And someone who's really good at not doing that, in my opinion, is is Patrick Starr, is one size. He comes out with products and he doesn't bullshit you about who they're right for. Like yeah. him coming out now with the hydrating primer. I had a laugh looking on Instagram of the video he posted where he literally says, he's like, we finally made a primer for dry skin. Because he never tried to pass off that any other primer he came out with was for dry skin. Yeah. It was called Secure the Sweat, Secure the Blur. It quite literally was made for people with oily skin. And he doesn't try to make one product, an all-in-one, and then shadily three years later come out with another product that does what that one said it did. And I respect him even having the two setting sprays at first. It was the uh, Secure the Glow and then the On Till Dawn, which is the mattifying one. So it was the hydrating and the luminous or the hydrating luminous and then the mattifying. Yep. Didn't work out. The pump kept breaking and it happened to me three times. Mm -hmm. I poured my setting spray into another bottle and I was just using that. Yes. I didn't care. Yeah. But to discontinue it and say, listen, something better will come down the line when we figure it out. And I'm so sorry. Exactly. Admit your wrongs and then leave it be but yeah you're like you're saying he doesn't bullshit anybody where it's like yeah this is not and even said yeah like we finally have this hydrating primer so this is good for dry skin yes if you're oily you're not gonna like it i know so it's not like anybody everyone needs hydration make sure you get this for the winter yes he's not selling it to everyone he's selling it to people who need it yes 
For, like, and that's what I mean. There's yeah. so much more power and specificity. Yeah. When I see new launches and especially foundations, and it says on the website that it's glowy, natural, and matte, and it's good for everybody. No, it isn't. For long. <laughs> no, it isn't. Yeah. It isn't good for everybody. No. That's, it can't happen. And that's the thing with Smashbox, too, that gets me annoyed, because they will come out with those products that do work for everybody. Do you remember the setting powders that you used to twist, and it would, like, dispense the powder? Yes. When I tell you incredible. I know. For anybody that needed a little bit of coverage, and what do you do? You go and discontinue. <laughs> I know. Let's, let's go ahead and have the most amazing product ever, and then discontinue it. Yes. Let's go ahead and make a product Primer that is quote unquote great by them, and yeah. it feels like silicone lube. slippy lube. <laughs> yeah, and then it's horrible. But let's make a jumbo of that. Oh though. yeah, let's make the jumbo. I let's know. make sure we have a Costco size of it, and we need to make sure that everyone can have that on their nightstand just in yes. case. Like yes, stop it. Oh Absolutely. my god, and you know what? Rightfully so. Then if you tank, it's on you. I know. There's the ones to me that are like actively. You're trying. I know. You're trying yeah. to bury yourself when like you quite literally have something so beautiful where I like know. if you had, oh my God, the blush palettes that used to be like the three shades of pink and the three shades of peach. Yes. What are we doing, mama? I know. When you have these beautiful formulas and then you come out with squeeze two blushes that you can't tell if it's a lip balm or a blush anymore. I I'm know. over it. it and let the clicky liner go, girl, because they're yeah. still on there. No, let them go totally. Talk about what a scam that is because you don't know when you're running out, you <laughs> yeah. And you're and because the people that kept clicking, how many times did we get returns of people who kept clicking those liners? Yeah, and they were like, I can't tell if I, I'm running out, and then they were like, Oh, yeah, I yeah. just twisted Aww. it all out, yeah. And the, where does it go? I don't know because it clicks. Where does that go? I know. Where does that product go? Can't even tell you. Sham and a scam. It is so stupid. Yeah. Smashbox over. Next up, we have three more brands. Let's jump into our two affordable makeup brands. Okay. We have ColourPop to start. Yeah. And the reason for mm. me is because you have brands like Wet n Wild and uh, Essence and Catrice, and they are affordable and mm. they had little pops of whatever, but ColourPop reinvented the game. ColourPop revolutionized the makeup industry Agreed. by the owners of ColourPop owned a makeup lab and they basically their makeup lab was used by other makeup companies for decades developing makeup and then they had the idea of like why don't we make our own brand we ha own a lab and they eliminated eight steps in the chain they were one of the first brands that was able to sell their makeup so cheap because they were getting rid of all of the the middleman. The middleman. Yeah. I remember so many things almost after the Morphe Makeup Geek era that ColourPop really started to gain its traction where it was Makeup Geek and Morphe minus the toxicity and the drama. Mm -hmm. And it, it was a little more fun. Yeah. Talk about falling victim to the 2020s trend of the collabs, SpongeBob collabs, and the fucking Door of the Explorer collabs. And I can't the take it. Naruto, Sailor Moon. Girl, it's one after the other. Alice in Wonderland. And then it's, I mean, name it Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer. Oh my God. It just goes on and on and on. It's just every time I turn around when there is a foolish collab. It's a new garbage collection. Because I want to know, I, I truly want to know, when we are thinking of these collabs and we're trying to bridge the world between makeup and then like a tv show or totally. a movie or whatever because did you see the new one girl that they just announced i don't even want to know what is it Take, i'm gonna i'm gonna give you <laughs> i'm gonna give you three guesses okay i'm gonna say the movies have not been out in years okay they have a cult following a very okay. specific cult following it's a very specific category okay i uh, think teen drama twilight i fucking saw it i saw it what are we do why now i know why now? now and why twilight i know why i don't get it what are we because this is the thing it is so random because with the sailor moon i get sailor moon is very popular the naruto didn't understand that one because no. what does that have to do with the makeup world like yeah. who at color pop is yeah who was a big fan because you <sighs> you won because you got your dream collection. The busiest department at ColourPop is the copyright lawyer, 
run it every day. I picture them just throwing Manila folders, being like, "What? What copyright can we get? Like, and whatever they and for get, cheap. they get, they take." Like, yeah, because like, what are we doing? Because uh, honestly, I can almost understand and appreciate the Alice in Wonderland because it's like there's a whimsical, colorful vibe, mm-hmm. but then we don't do a colorful palette. <laughs> totally, we do boo boo lavender and mint <laughs> yeah. green, and then we say that's Alice. Yes, and then we don't even like lean into any other color. And her so. name was not Alice. <laughs> I had to with your little Joanne shirt, your little Joanne era. Oh my God. What a time. What a time. That was a fun time. You guys said you wanted to have the Gaga episode. So you better believe Kevin's art pop merch, which everyone's going to be like, why the hell do you have art pop merch? Because Casey was like, what are you fucking talking about art pop merch? It was the 10th anniversary of art pop 2023. And they came out with merch. Most musician merch is disgusting and it is so cheap. And hers has notoriously been a... The Born This Way pillow, the Girl. Born This Way rug. Girl, the not r- the rug. Yeah. The rain on the boots. Yeah. Oh, boots. The jock yeah. strap. Yeah. The chromatica jock strap. That was homophobic. The yeah. soap. Totally. The, so- <laughs> <laughs> the dildo. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I bought it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, the worst merch I have ever seen at a concert. Uh-huh. And this one hurt because of like the legacy was Cher. <gasps> Kevin, I'm not kidding you. It was a Michaels crew neck sweatshirt with felt iron on letters that felt like it looked like felt iron on you could buy it at michael's that said sh- and they were too skinny and it just said share too far spaced apart like iron down a sweatshirt you've had 150 years and 75 dollars oh through the roof 105 <laughs> literally yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. the r pop merch the anniversary mm-hmm. the 10th anniversary merch came out and it's yeah. eight the second i saw the photos posted I think we sent each other photos. We were like, not us spending hundreds of dollars. Because you texted me your order. You were like, bitch, I just placed my order. And you sent me it. And I was like, oh my God, I'm just, I'm literally like, I was actively, I think I was at work. And I was like, no, I'm placing my order. Placed my order. Why did I get my order before you? And you placed your order hours before me. Yes. Crazy. It was all supposed to ship out January 5th. You got yours the 6th. (laughs) Six or 7th. And mine, every time I check it, the date keeps moving back. It's like, uh, gonna ship the 10th, the 11th, the 12th. Every day, do it. So when we get our our pop merch in, we were saying as well, we're gonna probably do a coinciding beauty video recreating like famous Gaga looks, the whole nine yards. We're gonna do a Gaga deep dive of the career, the music, the fashion, the makeup, the whole nine. Um, Joanne Era, that's why I brought it up. I said her name wasn't Alice. Alice in Wonderland, ColourPop. Yeah. (laughs) work thanks where i was going with this i've had so, two celsius yeah yeah, yeah you are <laughs> yeah yeah the chattering teeth just <laughs> literally <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah going back to that where i do think it, it, it's a lazy cash grab now yeah because you're taking the fans of these uh shows and you're really i think it's a risk too yes. because I want to be in a meeting room of ColourPop where they talk about these collaborations doing it with these tv shows and movies and whatever yes because they are taking things with cult following, sometimes not. Yeah. We're, I, I don't know. Maybe there is a cult following with some of these things, but Twilight feels so outdated at this yeah. point that the fans of Twilight are now so much older yes. and so much past that point where it's are they buying it for a nostalgia thing? So they're are they banking on people that have the money that were fans 10, 15 years ago? Are they banking on them because they have money now as consumers yeah. to go buy that makeup to yeah. like almost have a nostalgia piece? Like, oh, I loved these movies. I'm going to go buy the whole collection. Yes. Because swatching the collection, Trenmu did it. And it was- Don't boo-boo. even tell me. The people that were gooning, crab brown gooning for Twilight, uh-huh. our age, are now in their late 20s, early 30s, having children and moving on with their lives and getting careers. Yeah. They're not going to be gooning for- this cheap garbage makeup the way they would have in the heyday of Twilight when they yeah. were in their early 20s, late teens. Yeah. Moreover, that demographic of consumer is not going to buy whatever I know this Twilight ColourPop collab is going to be, which is going to be a bunch of blood red lip glosses, sheer, dusty, dead corpse morgue cool tone it was always raining in that town yes it was a depressing thing to watch yeah everyone was tim burton grayscale yeah makeup wise and then everyone like, just looked like this the whole time yeah. in the movie just like that's what i would associate yeah. a makeup collaboration with the that lip with. oils came out it was all lip oils you yeah. know they're sheer no color <sighs> it was a blood red black sheer black mm-hmm. lip oil and then a icy blue yeah give me my check 
Yeah. Who? What 34-year-old that was obsessed with Twilight when she was 21 that. is buying that now? No. Let like, me go while I'm going to my nine to five and picking out my kids from daycare, go buy a black lip, lip oil. oil. Just because it's the Twilight collection. And it aggravates me because it's like, why are you not using your advantage, which is their accessibility to make makeup and for the cheapness because they own the lab? Why are you not using that for an advantage rather than just throwing in the towel and making trash? It's like yeah. the Forever 21. We were the fast fashion generation. And, you know, our parents were always like, you know, clothes are disposable now. Back in my day, I kept my coat for 90 years. Like, we could never do that because no. everything was made like, garbage but we're it's even in fashion now we're seeing a return to quality over quantity i don't want to when i buy a pea coat i would like it to last more than a season three years oh, oh please exactly but i would like <laughs> it to last decades and you're seeing fashion brands that are reinventing themselves and doing better are going for a quality focused aesthetic mm -hmm. over quantity look at Abercrombie and Fitch completely rebrand rebranded with a, an aesthetic and a more accessible feel. The quality of everything is better. Express. I don't know if you've seen Express lately. Mm -hmm. It has everything. It looks like a collection. It looks like a designer's collection. Everything goes together. I could pick out a coat, spin in a circle, and there's there's 10 pieces I lay my eyes on between pants and shirts and that go with the coat yeah. I just picked up because it's like a fashion collection. I don't want to go into Forever 21 anymore. I don't want to sift through a flea market of garbage yeah. to find clothing anymore. The best buy clearance bin of movies uh -huh. to find something I want to put together. Absolutely. Because yeah. if I do find it, there's only going to be one left of it. So yeah. if it's not my size, and it, it's the same with makeup. Stop making quantity of Tweety garbage. Tweety Bird collection. Uh -huh. <laughs> Looney Tunes yeah. like collections. <laughs> go for what you can do <laughs> well, like you, I know you can yeah. make makeup cheap, but look at their core products. Foundation, trash. Concealer, trash. You have these little standouts like your tinted moisturizer. The powder. The powder foundation, super sock shadows, and your eyeshadows. End of list. <laughs> yep, and this is what really makes me mad. Go into an Ulta where they have a lot of real estate and almost every Ulta, I think every Ulta actually, yes. their core line is Trash. Trash. Trashed. Yeah. You go to the end cap though. I know. Of the, what they've recently come out with. So all of the lip products, garbage. But yes. that top shelf every time. Or go to the tables where they always, they have, always those have it collabs, by the register. And it's always that is like the prime focus. And it does a lot of it does sell out. I know. But at the last time I saw it, the Sailor Moon collection, I walked into an Ulta. It had been out for a few weeks fully stocked i know it's annoying i know stop coming out with this stuff because it's a cash grab and it's like putting all of these things into a hat and you're just like let's see and yes. oh sailor moon yep. that's gonna be the collection let's do part two because it sold so well the first time and the second time it flopped which so again, now what are you gonna do they're pulling a pat mcgrath in my opinion where when you buy off their website or they have some of them in store, their bigger 30 pan palettes with the smaller pans or the nine quads that formula is better than their collab formulas. Oh, yes, it is. When I get my little Hocus Pocus collabs in the mail, etc., Mama, Different. we are a little hard pressed and dusty. Different. Bring out Shimmers. the dustbuster. Yeah, like it's not Shimmers the are same. coating the room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like make the formula the same. Yeah, it, and they have no excuse because you made it for a buffalo nickel. So. Not a buffalo nickel. Yeah. Those glasses really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's this, make it the same formula. And I, yeah, because you are in full control here. There is nobody to blame but yourself. Mm -hmm. You're cutting corners clearly. And yeah. it's your own facility. <laughs> Girl, yeah. The call's coming from inside the house. Yeah. yeah. And I, that even, because it, it pissed me off even back in the day when they did. Remember when they did the full collection of gel pot liners and then the gel pencil liners that matched? Yes. The gel pots. Dried out in two days for Two me. days. Yeah. I was pissed. Yes. I bought the white, used it. I was like, oh, amazing. Went to go use it maybe a week later. <laughs> and I was like, did I leave the cap off or what? Dry. Yeah. Ring around the rosy. <laughs> Honey, yeah. I said, this is dry. dry. <laughs> yeah. Just as I thought. Trash. Dry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, wow, this is like really 
fucking lazy I that know. you're going to charge me $8 and now, yeah, am I going to go order another one? I don't know. I don't know if I want to wait two and a half weeks for it to get shipped from Los Angeles, California. <laughs> totally. Like, this is ridiculous. I know. It took forever to get here. And it's like, girl, mm-mm. I it's know. corny, tired, and played out. So good for you. And we don't need another Star Wars collection. We don't need <clears throat> another Muppets collection. And that goes for Wet n' Wild, too. I Stop know. Stop doing Sesame Street. Stop doing the boo-boo, nasty, big palettes with the clear lid, <sighs> with the ugly shimmers when you touch them. It's like no pigment. And then... Wet, wet and wild is like their collabs are like almost a little more irritating and freaky because they're a little bit too i don't need a toddler an, i don't need an elmo brush holder mama it's like sesame street lilo and stitch it's like baby like it's nick jr and i'm like what the squishy elmo brush container was Girl, a real I'm thing i'm like who you going for here yeah like, they're like a cookie monster pacifier they're like oh you don't want that yeah they're like a little bit too like baby adolescent-y and i'm like Weird for a makeup. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why? Yeah, why? Like the Burton yeah, yeah, yeah. Ernie. I didn't need Burton Ernie lip gloss. That's mama. what I mean. Yeah, like next is going to be like bluey. Like, what are we doing? Like, it's who you selling to? Uh, this might be. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hold you to that. We're your one watch. collection away of going on a registry. Like, yeah, yeah girl. <laughs> like, <laughs> arg. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, next up, we have one more affordable brand, which is uh, Makeup Revolution is oh, another one. God. Makeup Revolution, which, first of all, pick a name. Is it Revolution or is it Makeup Revolution? I never know what it is. I never know what to say. Their branding is all over the place. And uh, they were another one that I felt like they were kind of like doing what Elf was doing and what ColourPop was doing before Elf perfected it. Mm-hmm. And Elf, love him or hate him, like with the dupe thing at this point they were unapologetic though they were makeup revolution yeah yes they were doing chocolate bar two face palettes and calling it the bar chocolate <laughs> yeah, yeah instead yeah. of chocolate bar <laughs> yes. like mama yeah they were, they were really out here doing and their formulas though i never liked their eyeshadow formulas no they were disgusting <laughs> yeah since day one and even yeah. now it's like when the remember the alexa stone palette yes that was honestly one of the first times i was like okay i like they're going in the right direction yes. i don't hate this yes and then just nosedive and nose then they dive. did the simpsons treehouse of horror yes amazing amazing like I was like, okay, we, still we one of my most out. colorful palettes. Yeah, and I was like, wow, we figured out a great system here. I we know. have a good formula, and then we took a nose dive again. I know, and so it's the inconsistency again because you're formulating your eyeshadows. I assume in the same place. Why can we not keep it consistent from collection to collection? I know. And there were so many things. Remember back in the day, you turned me on to the highlighter quads. It was like the big palettes of like the squares. Girl, not only that. The rectangle contour palette. Wow. When I tell you, I hit pan on this contour palette. Yeah. Like, because it was the most perfect, gorgeous, buttery, cool tone contours. Yeah. Bridal kit. I use that shit out. That and then that fucking highlight palette you're talking about. They had two of them. One was in a gold packaging. And or one three. was in the bronze. One was in a silver, one was in a bronze, and one was in a... Uh, the gold. Gold. Yeah. The bronze was for deep. The They silver came out with like a... Uh, silver was the palest and like a little blushy. Yeah. And then the gold was the... Like, the superstar. The middle. Yeah. Blinding. Creamy. But what Anastasia glow kits always wanted to be. Should have been. Yes. Yeah. Which those fucking glow kits were... I Disgusting. Sh- so texture, gritty, like... Oh. But Nicole Guerrero's glow kit was the yes. goat, and then we discontinued that. Of course. Of course. Uh, and yes, that uh, get, gone, discontinued. Contour palette, gone, discontinued. Again, we have a superstar product. Let's get rid of it because yeah. it's amazing. I know. And then we're coming out with like garbage other makeup too, like duping the Bobby Brown or the Jones Road, bl- like the blush bombs or whatever. Disgusting. Disgusting. Yes. Goopy. Garbage Girl. tin makeup. <laughs> Oscar the Grouch <laughs> lives in there, and he said, "Oh, you want to? Oh, I don't know what he sound. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Arr, yeah. Arg, matey, you want to see my garbage shoot? tinted crisp? <laughs> gar- not my garbage shoot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's gay. I'm assuming then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tinted Crisco was those bombs. <laughs> bombs. The most 
goopy, slidey, oily shit. Yeah, disgusting. And then they even they were onto something though when they came out with that concealer that duped the Shape Tape concealer. Which one was it? I forget the name of it, but it was like the thick concealer that had yes. the doe foot of uh, the Shape Tape full coverage concealer. Yeah. Looked amazing, super great, and it was in the they had it in the short bottle at first, and then they it was like the bigger one. Yep, amazing, and I they know. kind of were like onto something, and then the formulas were started to tank again, I and know. it wasn't discontinued the other formula, and I was like, what are you doing? And then you just saw they were going and like the, they had like all the setting sprays and primers, the cotton candy collection, they had the the hemp collection, the, hemp. the cannabis hemp thing i was like what are, are you doing because you're trying to do what milk was doing with like the cannabis and yeah. like the kush mascara and then you tried to do a full-blown like eyeshadow palette on it yeah. and it was let it go i know it's garbage i know and then you wanted to have like this hemp cbd moment over here and it was like too disjointed on their gondola of like a weird clearance bin of like you have hemp here cotton candy primer over here and then you have your foundation here and then on the bottom row there was like highlighter palettes and over here there was like lip kits that dirty like tissues Kylie. yeah and i'm like uh, yeah uh, 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 uh. makeup revolution is at the point when i go yeah. past the makeup revolution gondola now in I ulta at it. i roll up my windows yeah it's a bad neighborhood I, that's how i feel yeah. it's like a bad neighborhood like i'm just oh. like oh oh well white refrigerator oh, oh we gotta girl. find you a home we gotta find you a home and like, have you seen though remember when makeup revolution had real estate in ulta's and it was like yes i'm talking the expansion of like what nyx has it yes. was like eight gondolas worth two yeah. oh i know and the minute they like updated the gondolas mm -hmm. and everything they, the gondolas got so stunning the makeup stopped being like made all like, their, all their just, money went into the I, yeah to the aesthetic yeah. of the brand they bought a mansion and didn't have enough money to furnish it like it was or like, even the furniture going in it was <laughs> In boo, -boo packaging. Yeah, so I absolutely. was like, oh, so we clearly, yeah, spend the money on the house and not enough on <laughs> yeah. the people going in it. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, hobos were living in the mansion. 100%. Because yeah. that's what it is. Whenever I go in Ulta, like on the Makeup Revolution gondola, it looks like a garbage. Like there's like dirty tissues and like cot wet cotton balls. It looks balls. like wish.com <laughs> makeup. Yes. On a gondola in Ulta. It is I disgusting. Know. I know. It is filthy. Okay, last but not least, Clinique save the best for last girl we teased it last week very quickly i said ghosts you made me die <laughs> explain to everyone what a ghost is okay so <laughs> i want to talk clinique heyday so when they were really doing the thing or when they thought they were doing the thing yeah um so back in the day probably like early 2000s maybe even in the 90s that when makeup brushes clearly weren't a thing mm -hmm. for people to use that for regular consumers yeah. yeah like when you went to a counter and you went to go try on makeup with a clinique specialist in the white lab coat which they still do a to clinique this day. scientist yeah yeah <laughs> they would take a cotton ball they would take a cotton ball and put a tissue over it and then pinch the cotton ball in the <laughs> tissue and make a ghost and then dip it into blush and then then proceed to stipple put this on, on your that. face and use Powder. this as an applicator tool. They're little ghosts, a little Clinique ghost. If anybody ever came at me came at me with a cotton ball wrapped in a wrapped tissue. in a tissue i would get up and walk over to estee lauder <laughs> yeah like totally. i'm not you are not coming at me i know with any any black honey pink honey pink sugar pop Anything. whatever you want to call it i know but let's talk about it yeah their heyday what was it was chubby it chubby sticks <laughs> Not the chubby sticks. Girl, that always skeeved me out, first of all. Don't because call anything a chubby stick. <laughs> the fact that there were chubby sticks for the eye, chubby sticks for the lip, chubby sticks for your pants, chubby sticks for, <laughs> for the holes. Yeah. <laughs> for the, yeah. <laughs> because selling chubby sticks for the eyes, the twist up bulbous crayons <laughs> <laughs> made me ah, yeah. sick. <laughs> bulbous and it was yeah. like amethyst dream Girl. and it was like just like boo-boo chunky crayola Ew. sized yeah. i was like what and the chubby is this sticks for the lip were always translucent and oily. and it was like cherry pop <laughs> yeah strawberry pop disgusting i wanted to you know grape that fucking pop. melt in someone's purse wait you know? and then can we talk about the shade grape pop was red <laughs> it was red it I wasn't know. a grape bitch I it know. was fucking red disgusting i hated <laughs> yeah when people would come in and this is the days where you used to see me roll my eyes in the back of my head yeah 
at people <laughs> when they would come in to support and they were like, can I get matched with the Clinique Foundation? I need I my know. chubby sticks. I was like, <laughs> I know. Girl. And they were like, I love it. It's so pigmented. I know. I think this is where my disgust for Clinique really came from. And I'll, I'll admit, my first high-end foundation was Clinique. Really? It was the Acne Solution Foundation because I went in, or it was the even better, or like it, yeah, something no, it like that. Yeah, no, it wasn't the Acne Solution because that came out when we worked together. Yeah. So you would have had No, so it that, was the that, even better. The little oval yes. bottle, I went to Macy's and I was yes. like, oh, it's not for me. It's for a friend. Yeah. They're like, well, what what's your friend's skin tone? I was like, mine. mine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I got matched for it and it was, you know, serviceable. Yeah. And the person matched me eight shades too dark. So totally. I was walking around with orange foundation. Uh-huh. So I was like, wow. Not much has changed. <laughs> <laughs> Read Inter-change. me, why don't you? No, this looks gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah. Um. No, I totally agree. Oh my God. That was my villain origin story with Clinique. It was my first foundation. <gasps> I got matched eight shades too dark. Now we know. Now we know. Yeah. Wow. Now we know. Reading Rainbow, the more you know. Totally. And that's really what it was. It was like, it, it just the makeup is just n- not it and never has been it. It has been so left in the dust by other brands. And then I even think about the skincare where I'm like, what was it back in the day? Was it like... It was dramatically different. <sighs> fuck off. Was it like... <laughs> affordable like let's go back to its heyday was it affordable compared to other brands at the time that it was like for lack of a better word no one read me because listen i grew up very poor was it the poor man's skincare back in the day before there was you know neutrogenas and all this shit in the now it was more accessible yeah and it was made accessible because i feel like back in the day estee lauder yeah clinique lancome totally your pillars yes Lancome and Estee Lauder were probably looked at more of like the your prestige. stepped up and your prestige skincare. Yeah. So Clinique was a good entry level and good entry level price point. Yes. Entry level skincare where it wasn't doing a lot. Yes. So it was great like <laughs> first skincare line for a lot of these Babies people to in- yeah, to introduce to their yeah. daughters and whatever. Yeah. Like I'm using mom is using Estee Lauder Lancome, but you can start with Clinique. Yes. The formulas haven't changed <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah. We are still using dramatically different lotion and gel. <laughs> yes. And cream. Yes. And uh, the moisture surge. <laughs> yeah. Like 100 yeah. hour moisture. Yeah. Where? Where? I know. I just don't. The astringent. That burns Girl, your eyes. That, well, I used to use that. Like I no used to use the pink, I think. It was the purple, pink, the blue, and the green. I, I used to use one of them. When I tell you, I would put it on my forehead. My acne. And I was like. Fry it. Uh, my eyes would st- I'm not kidding. The yeah. fumes would yeah. like start to like make my eyes like tingle. I was like, this doesn't feel right. No. It wasn't anywhere near my eyes. No. And I was like, this ain't right. The like, minute I stopped when I had bad acne, like actually in my like 1920s. Your uh, 1920s? I'm, I don't know why I said it like that. When you, I was, yeah, after high school. She was a little flapper girl. Yeah, my 1920s, yeah. 19, 20 years old. Yeah. I used Clinique Astringent, oh. did nothing, just burned it, fried it, still fried happens. Fried your skin. And uh, the minute I switched to like a lotion toner, acne gone. I used to use Seabreeze astringent that's, as that well. That fucking same. That's what the Clinique astringent was like. No moisturizer after. No. I was just drying oh. out my skin with astringent and yeah. then going to bed feeling like, oh, I'm not oily anymore. I'm good. Exactly. I would wake up in the morning. Oh, yeah. Because and you I was took like, all the oil away. <clears throat> so your skin, yeah, yeah, would produce so much yeah. oil. And I was like, why is my skin more? wet in the morning? And I then I was broken out. And then when I started hydrating my skin and balancing my Cleaning skin. Cleaning while hydrating. Yeah, I yes. would wash my face properly tone it properly, yep. moisturize, and SPF, my skin cleared up. I know. And I was like, hmm, well. So at this point, that's what I mean about Clinique. I'm just like, you're not, you talk about a girl, like, outdated, clinging not, to a brand image that is like, <gasps> uh, wh- but I gotta give them their flowers because I just saw. Maybe with something new on the horizon, I know. These, uh, the Clinique Pop lipsticks, so their original lipstick line, they have this pink in there, number 20. So are they new shades? So I think it's all reformulated. Like, they took their shade range and, like, redid it a little bit. Okay. Because they had a bright pink called Wow Pop, which okay. I loved. Yeah. And I never bought it because it was Clinique. Absolutely. And I was like, oh, it's going to come off in two seconds. <laughs> yeah. But now there's, like, all of these, like, more neutral shades and pinks and reds and a full I'm talking a full assortment of lipsticks yeah 
I'm borderline intrigued. Wow. Like, yes, I'm the sh- really, I'm. We'll put the photo in. It was yeah. gorgeous. I know. I'm really like, I'm, I'm getting a little excited thinking about it. So I, I got to give it to them. But here we go again, though. In their heyday, if we want to call it that. Yeah. From the, I, I'm going to call it, they've been around for, oh my God, hundreds of years. I know. I swear. Yeah. They've been yeah. around since 1812. <laughs> and yeah. they've been coming out with the same products over and over again, which that was your peak. Dramatically different was great. Moisture yeah. surge, great. All of that stuff, great. What have you done since then that has been different to elevate your brand, Nothing. your brand image? Yeah. You've come out with things, but they're not anything. Because I remember doing Clinique events at Sephora. They were like, oh, we have like this amount of a goal today. And I'm like, yeah. What do you want me to do? What, what do, you do you want me to, me to do? sell? Because then when I would know, I, it was almost embarrassing when I would like bring them a client. I'm like, oh yeah, like if you want to show this person Clinique, like maybe they can match you for a foundation. The person was like, ew, no. No. Yeah. They were like, can I get NARS? And I'm especially, like, yeah. Exactly. Especially in a place like a Sephora or an Ulta, because I feel like the only thing that keeps Sephora, the only thing that keeps Clinique afloat is department store gift with purchases. Oh, it's like the same, yeah. you know, old, 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 yeah. old, old women hunting down, like, you know what I mean? Like looking Black for their Friday in each other yeah. to get a fucking free to happy get their, bag. Yeah. Like, you oh, know, like, oh my God, like, they're happy samples and their bulbous eyeshadow. Yeah. And their chubby stick. Yeah. Like, what? I just yeah. don't understand it. Oh. All right, guys, that's it for a brand new episode. Uh, God, this is going to be a fun year. I feel like I'm already like gooning and baiting, crab and gooning for all crab the episodes gooning. we have coming up. Yeah. We have, we're heading into award season. We have our Gaga episode. We uh, came up with other ideas. The other ones we wrote down last week. Like we just have so many fun episodes. I'm like, it's almost, I wish we did more than one a week because I'm I like, I know we have so much to talk about. So oh make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel to get your episode one day early and turn on those push notifications. So you know the minute we upload the episode. Also make Make sure to subscribe on Spotify and Apple Podcast. Leave us a five-star review if you can, because that's all she cares about, girl. I'm serious. Go to Apple Podcasts. Go to Spotify. Leave us a review right now. <laughs> Wherever you are, we hope you are happy, safe, and healthy. And remember... You are beautiful. Bye. Bye. We're going to go remove our makeup with ghosts. <laughs> Dipped in makeup remover. We should ghosts. do a full video trying to use everything, no makeup brushes, and just using ghosts and sponge tip applicators. And we're off. (laughs) 